In accordance with the provisions of the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act of 1975, the Audubon Board of Education transmitted notice of this meeting scheduled at 6.30 p.m. in the Audubon Junior Senior High School Library Media Center to the Retrospect newspaper and the Borough Clerk and by postings on the Audubon Public School District website and at the main and the Pine Street entrance of the Junior Senior High School. Roll call, please, Mrs. Ron Case. James Blumenstein. Here. Allison Cox. Here. Andrea Robinson. Here. Amy Davis. Here. Stephen Wilson. Here. Kara Butricka absent. Allison Lipsky. Here. Mark Gaddy. Here. Bill Wilson. Here. Jonathan Maxson. Here. Thank you. Whereas while the Senator Byron and Bear Open Public Meetings Act requires all meetings of the Audubon Board of Education to be held in public, NJSA 10 colon 4-12B sets forth nine types of matters that may lawfully be discussed in executive session, i.e. without the public being permitted to attend. And whereas the Audubon Board of Education has deemed it necessary to go into closed session to discuss certain matters which are exempted from the public and as are indicated on the agenda. We have a motion to go into executive session. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, we will be approximately 30 minutes. And we're going across.
Board of Ed meeting? Motion. Second. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order again and ask everyone to stand for the flag salute, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, I'd like to ask our student representative, Ms. Bacconi, if she has anything to report this evening. Just make sure that it's on. I actually have two things to talk about. Um, so one of them is the fire and lockdown drills within the school. Um, they're really good. They always go really well. Everybody knows what they're doing with them. But I just feel that they're very um, similar each time. We don't do them during different periods. They're always during 7th or 8th period. And they never happen during passing periods or during lunch. So nobody knows what to do if it were to happen in, during that time. Um, and then my other thing I had to talk about was, oh gosh, it slipped on my mind. Um, oh yeah, the ceilings in the auditorium, which I know is on the referendum. Um, I just wanted to bring to light how serious it actually is because as you guys know, the play was uh, either last week or the week before. And during the third night, it was raining and the ceiling was leaking backstage. And it got all over the costumes and on the baby grand piano. and. Um, it just soaked a lot of costumes and caused a lot of issues for the people who were in the play. Um, and I know that it is on the referendum and it will be happening soon. I just wanted to talk about it because I had a lot of people come to me about it within school. All right. Um, before we move on to the student spotlight um, recognition, I did want to announce while we while we have people here that um, Ms. Butrika is actually going to be resigning from the Board of Education effective May 1st. So I wanted to, the, the board's going to discuss the timeline for that and how interviews will proceed, but I wanted to make that announcement again while we had some people here in attendance so that um, if you yourself are interested in um, possibly joining the board or you have friends or neighbors who have spoken of it in the past now um, now would be the opportunity the procedure is that the board interviews candidates um, and then chooses a candidate from those that come forward so um, again if you yourself might be interested or know of any friends and neighbors that live in Audubon that might be interested look for um, information on our website about that okay. Yes, Ms. Lipsky's been through it, Mr. Gaddy's been through it. Were you through it a while back? Okay, all right, Mrs. Cox has been through it. Um, Jane's been through it, not publicly, but Jane's been through it, yes. Uh, and Monica has gone through it as well, so um, we hope that we'll have lots of interest to fill that seat. Okay, now we can move on with one of the best parts of our meeting, which is the student recognition. Dr. Davis? So if you haven't been here before, so we will be recognizing our students from pre-K all the way to grade 12. I'm going to move the podium a little bit so we get some good shots. Um, what's going to happen is board member will come up. We'll call you up. We do them in order, pre-K all the way to 12. Little ones and big ones. There's a couple good spots. If you stand here, you're on camera. Stand here, mom and dad. Whomever's here with you can take your picture. Anybody's here to take pictures, we do have their pictures on the back. So you can get a shot up here if you like. If you want to get up here so you're closer, that's good. I'll end up taking a group shot at the end. So with no further ado, we'll start with PK. Okay, our first student of the month for pre-K is Ben Ryder. Ben. Ben Ryder was, is nominated as the Preschool Student of the Month. Ben demonstrates all the characteristics of SWARM. Ben demonstrates safety by following instructions in the classroom, hallway, and bathroom. 
Ben works together with his peers to keep the classroom organized and neat. He's always looking for ways to help. Ben demonstrates a strong commitment to learning, which helps him achieve his goals. His curiosity and eagerness to learn is truly inspiring. Ben is a wonderful role model for, for his peers. He consistently exhibits kindness, empathy, and respect towards others, and his positive attitude brightens our classroom every day. Lastly, Ben demonstrates mindfulness with his remarkable ability to recognize and regulate his emotions in various situations. Whether faced with excitement, frustration, or joy, he approaches each emotion with a sense of calm and understanding. Ben is an asset to have in our classroom. I'm confident that Ben will continue to inspire others with his presence and genuine compassion. Great job, Ben. Now, in kindergarten, we have Noah Tyler. Noah Tyler. Noah Tyler is nominated as the Kindergarten Student of the Month. His teacher says Noah is a friendly Haviland Hornet who displays safe, respectful, and responsible behavior each and every day towards his classmates as well as his teachers. Noah is always caught doing the right thing no matter where he is or what he's doing. Noah will go above and beyond to help anyone if they are in need. He was new to our school this year and did a great job adjusting. His hard work and determination to do his best work are going to take him far. Noah is an excellent student and a pleasure to have in class. His teachers are excited to name him the February Student of the Month. Keep up the great work, Noah. Alexander Gensaro is nominated as the first grade student of the month. Go, go. I need to put it in. Right there. His teacher says Alex upholds Haviland's three core values of being respectful, responsible, and safe. He is a role model for other students and how to treat classmates with kindness and caring. He is always quick with words of encouragement and praise to fellow students, and he is kind and respectful to teachers, students, and other staff members. These are wonderful attributes, but what I am most proud of Alex for is the growth and progress he has shown over the last couple months. Alex lets out a big groan when writer's workshop is done because he wants to keep writing. He asks for extra math work to do during math centers and he just loves to read. The confidence and excitement that Alex has for school and learning is the best gift any teacher can be given by their student. Keep up the great job, Alex. We're proud of you. Schmidt is nominated as the second grade student of the month. Her teacher says, as our classroom continues to learn, grow, and develop skills and strategies to become independently hardworking, caring students, we are repeatedly practicing being safe, respectful, and responsible as well. Encouraging this sense of value in our students goes hand in hand with the instructional methods we prepare for every day. This month, our classroom would like to celebrate a student that demonstrates these morals daily and has done so since entering the second grade. She is not only all of these, but she is kind, caring, supportive to her peers, and a hard-working hornet. Congratulations to Haley Schmidt. You're such a great role model and should be proud of yourself for giving so much to those around you. Good evening, everyone. Brody Preston is nominated as the third grade student of the month. His teacher says, I am proud to recognize Brody as the student of the month. Brody consistently exemplifies what it means to roar. He is respectful to his teachers and peers. Brody always tries to include everyone. He listens to others with enthusiasm and is always willing to participate and share. Brody takes ownership of his work by consistently completing it on time. He enjoys researching topics. He enjoys to create slideshows. Brody is a friendly student who comes to school every day with a positive attitude. He is a wonderful leader and role model in our school community. Congratulations, Brody.
Michaela Tracy is nominated as the fourth grade student of the month. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All good. So we'll read it in her honor. Michaela has shown roar expectations all year. She has shined in all aspects of school. She has not only shown responsibility for completing her own work, but has also shown responsibility in being on task. She demonstrates ownership by problem solving, using resources, and asking for help when she needs it. Michaela's achievement is something that she's always working towards completing with 100% effort. Even when something is hard, Michaela shows perseverance that helps her to overcome obstacles that are in her way. Michaela shows respect for everyone around her. She gets along with everyone and is ready with a smile towards all her teachers. We are so proud of Michaela, her efforts and excitement towards learning. Way to roar. Congratulations. Lena Sin's teacher says, I am proud to nominate Lena. She has consistently exhibited the war expectations. Lena is always respectful to her classmates and teachers. She shows respect each and every day when she walks through the door, never forgetting to say thank you. Lena respects both her teachers and her classmates. She even asks for help in the classroom. She even asks to help in the classroom, which is always appreciated. Lena takes ownership by sharing her thoughtful answers with the class and by being a wonderful role model for her peers. Her achievement can be seen in her consistent effort in all that she does. She always tries her best and wants to succeed. She produces high quality work that is thoughtful and thorough. Lena shows responsibility through her completion of classroom classwork and homework. She always checks in with her teachers for any missed work due to band or absences. Lena will seek out her teachers when she is unsure of something, which really shows her dedication to learning. I am so proud of all that Lena has accomplished in fifth grade and can't wait to see what the future holds. She has clearly earned the title of Student of the Month. Congratulations, Lena. Matthias Gleason is nominated as the 6th grade student of the month. <laughs> Matthias's teacher says, respect, ownership, achievement, and responsibility, war, are qualities that help to build character within our students. At Mansion Ave School, we are fortunate to have model students like Matthias who emulate these traits. Matthias is a talented student whose success is directly affected by his efforts and determination to succeed. In addition to the exceptional work ethic he demonstrates in his academics, Matthias is also an accomplished pianist, participates in the school choirs, helping Paul's Club and Newspaper Club at Mansion Ave School. Matthias works hard and challenges himself to do his very best in every scenario as a fantastic role model and a conscientious student. His positive attitude allows him to connect with his peers easily. Matthias is always polite, and his demonstration of war expectations is woven into the fabric that makes him unique. For all these reasons and more, Matthias has earned our designation as sixth grade student of the month. Congratulations, Matthias. We are profoundly proud of you and are excited for you to continue to shine in middle school. Seventh grade student of the month is Christian O'Connor. We are delighted for Christian and his outstanding performance and seamless transition to the AHS from Haddon Heights. His positive demeanor, coupled with his great sense of humor, 
has made a lasting impression on both students and staff. Despite facing the challenges of adjusting to a new school environment, he has displayed remarkable diligence in completing assignments, even when absent, showcasing his commitment to academic excellence. Christian's proactive approach to his education is commendable. Not only does he advocate for himself by seeking extra help and clarification when needed, but he also actively engages in class discussions, demonstrating, demonstrating his attentiveness to instruction. Beyond academics, Christian has effortlessly integrated into the AHS student body, forming meaningful connections with his peers. His passion for animals is evident through his beautiful fish and turtle tank, as well as being a dog owner and his family's commitment to fostering a dog soon. We eagerly anticipate witnessing the continued success and achievements that lie ahead for Christian at AHS. Congratulations, Christian. William Flanagan Cook is nominated as the 8th grade student of the month. Audubon proudly recognizes William for his outstanding achievements this year. Affectionately known as Willie, he has become a cherished staple within our school community. He is an exemplary student who consistently embodies the spirit of dedication and generosity at our junior high, always ready to lend a hand. <coughs> Willie's willingness to take on any task presented to him is truly commendable. His selfless attitude extends beyond the classroom. <coughs> as he frequently volunteers for activities that go above and beyond the expectations placed on any student. Willie's commitment to excellence is not limited to academics. He has been channeling his determination and work ethic into rigorous preparations in both the classroom and the weight room, demonstrating an admirable dedication to his passion for football. In addition to his outstanding academic achievements, Willie's contributions to the school community are immeasurable. His positive attitude and eagerness to support his peers make him a natural leader, and his actions set a shining example for others to follow. William Flanagan Cook has developed into a well-rounded and exceptional individual who truly deserves the recognition as the student of the month. Catherine McGurk is nominated as the ninth grade student of the month. <laughs> Catherine is truly deserving of the student of the month recognition for her outstanding commitment to academic excellence and her exemplary dedication to school activities. As a student, Catherine consistently prepares for classroom activities with enthusiasm and a genuine thirst for knowledge. Her exceptional work ethic and diligence set her apart allowing her to maintain an impressive class ranking. Catherine's passion for learning is not confined to the classroom. She goes above and beyond her role as a student by actively participating in various extracurricular activities. Beyond academics, Catherine is deeply involved in the school community through her participation in clubs such as Interact and Civics. Her commitment to making a positive impact extends beyond the school walls, showcasing her dedication to community service and civic engagement. Additionally, Catherine is a well-rounded individual and is set to run track, highlighting her versatility and determination. Her all-around excellence, both in and out of the classroom, makes Catherine McGurk an amazing young lady and a role model for her peers. Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. Gabriel Andujar is nominated as the 10th grade student of the month. Gabriel's remarkable hard work and determination is evident in his attendance, completion of assignments, and ability to advocate for himself. 
In the classroom, his positive attitude is elevated learning environment, showcasing a commendable work ethic that extends beyond individual success. Gabriel's positive mindset towards school has significantly contributed to his academic achievements in the second marking period, earning him honor roll status. Not only has he set ambitious goals for himself, but his proactive approach to personal and academic growth serves as an inspiration to his peers. We are extremely proud of his overall growth. We will look forward to witnessing Gabriel's continued success and the positive impact he will undoubtedly make on the entire school community. Congratulations, Gabe, on this well-deserved recognition. example of a student whose character and positive influence resonates throughout our school community, making him the well-deserved student of the month. Trent's kindness and outgoing nature create an inclusive and welcoming atmosphere for everyone he encounters. His genuine empathy and compassion are not just words but actions, as he goes out of his way to make others feel valued and included in a fun and engaging manner. As a leader and role model, Trent consistently demonstrates his commitment to hard work and helping others. Whether it's excelling in his academics with an impressive GPA, showcasing his athletic prowess as a multi-sport athlete, or actively participating in Interact and Student Council, Trent embodies the spirit of dedication and enthusiasm. His school spirit is contagious, evident not only in his day-to-day -day interactions, but also in his vibrant presence at various school events. Trent Bandle is a true asset to our school, exemplifying the qualities of a well-rounded and admirable student, or admirable student. We won't have a 12th grade student of the month, because if you didn't know, many of our students are in Disney World, or at Disney World, so I'll have all the other students come on over. We're going to get a phone call.
Yep. We're going to hold off any district reports. I just have a couple comments in regards to the superintendent's report. Um, I'm going to speak to some of the agenda items now. Um, so like operations number 12, I'd just like to thank Bob Garrison of Garrison Architects and his whole team for their tenacity and also their perseverance. They secured us and were able to secure us a small business grant for $2.5 million, which is definitely going to help us with some of those increased costs in the referendum and get those projects done. So it's, it's an excellent and a nice surprise. Still working on a couple more, but kudos. Uh, number 13, I'd like to thank Ms. Ron Case. She's going to make some comments in regards to the, the overall budget, but I really want to thank the budget managers and all their work going through to make sure we're putting forth a balanced budget for the 24-25 school year. It takes a lot. There's a lot to consider, and um, I appreciate their time and efforts. Number 14, this one, this shout out goes to Mrs. Ledyard, Mr. Burke, Ms. Bissinger, and Ms. Ronkes, and all their work with the preschool budget submission. You know, we continue to go through and refine how we are budgeting and supporting. Of course, there's a big push um, for us to get additional classrooms. We haven't uh, reached our, the, the total population. Uh, we, I think currently we probably have at least 50 to 60, maybe even 70. Uh, little ones that are on the waiting list so in my absence when the new superintendent comes on board I think that's something that the team really needs to think about and work and potentially work with you know Audubon Park and see what we can do in regards to securing some more rooms in that building but kudos for that work really the initial work uh, to get us the PEA grant at all but then also the growth over the last the last couple of years so I appreciate their time and effort uh, human resources, we've all seen uh, in regards to some of the staff, uh, unfortunately, that have been out for different leaves, uh, whether it be at the high school or uh, the, any of the other three buildings. This is really a shout out to all the faculty and staff that have helped in some way, that provided support for those classrooms, whether they assisted with writing lesson plans, going into classrooms and delivering those lessons, working with students, and also following up with parents. It's really a team and a community, and although you might not necessarily see it specifically in that HR agenda, there's been a lot of collegiality and congeniality to really support our students, our staff, and the buildings as a whole. So that's really a shout out that I want to make to the faculty and staff. Uh, we'll get to HR when we get to number 14. Uh, I want to be the first one to thank Virginia Tappan for her 23 plus years of service in Audubon. Um, she's worked in other districts too, so she will be missed and I really appreciate her, 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 you know, our time with her. Um, referendum, general updates. Havel and HVACs are done. There's some cinch up work that we have to do, meaning tile work and some things around where the HVACs are. Um, we're closing up the, the low voltage, whether it be the camera systems, the PAs, and the mic, so that, that works almost complete, but there's some, still some fine tuning, and we're really looking forward to the controls being set up and working in all locations. Then mansions, HVACs, you know, they're all in, and they're, they're cinching up too. Here at the junior senior high, we're working in B-Wing right now, and then as we move forward for spring recess, we'll be working at the top of C, and then after spring recess, the bottom of C and the last 17 HVACs should be done, I would say sometime in April. Uh, as Ms. Paponi said, we, you know, we are looking forward to getting the last of our roofs, and that part cinched up for us too. Haviland's done, Mansion's done. Most of the junior senior high done is done. The only thing that is missing is the top of A over the auditorium and then the entrance way. And we might start some of that work. There's some conversation about doing that work over spring recess for the front. We can't do the auditorium, but the auditorium will be done and we'll definitely be ready for you know for, for next school year with no leaks on any of our 
artists and performers. Last but not least, a little shout out, uh, Ms. Dan Howie, who is our assistant principal for school counseling, uh, wanted to make sure everybody was aware of the progress for scheduling in the junior senior high for next year. Uh, looks like everybody's going through, and that also includes our Mount Ephraim students. Uh, they've had over 6,000 logins in the counseling office over the course of the school year up to date, meaning every time a student goes in to see a counselor, um, not every time, sometimes they sneak in you know, without signing in, but that's a little shout out to them for their work and looking at the schedules for next year, but then also providing supports for our students over the course of the year for all sorts of different reasons. So to him and our you know, the guidance counselors, school counselors, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's it for me. Thank you very much, Jack. All right, uh, moving on. May I have a motion to approve the minutes for February 21st, 2024, public and executive session? Motion. Second. Roll call, please. Jim Blumenstein? Yes. Allison Cox? Yes. Mark Gaddy? Yes. Allison Lipsky? Yes. Jonathan Maxson? Yes. Andrea Robinson? Yes. Bill Wilson? Yes. Stephen Wilson? Yes. Amy Davis? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. All right, moving on to our first um, public participation for agenda items only. The Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. In order to permit the fair and orderly expression of such comment, the board has set aside two portions of this board meeting for public comment on any school or school district issue that a member of the public feels may be of interest to the residents of the school district. For the first portion, public comments are invited on matters pertaining only to the agenda for tonight's meeting. And for the second portion, public comments are invited on all matters pertaining to the school district. Participants should announce their name, address, and any group they may represent if applicable. The board reserves the right to limit public discussion. Public discussion of a topic will be limited to 15 minutes, and individual speakers will be limited to three minutes. No participant may speak more than once on the same topic until all others who wish to speak on that topic have been heard. Please reference bylaw number 0167 of the Audubon Public Schools Board of Education Manual. The board uses the public comment period as an opportunity to listen to citizens. Not all issues brought to a board meeting will be resolved at that particular meeting. Complaints stated or actions requested by the public may be taken under the advisement of the board for investigation, discussion, action, or disposition at a later date or time. The public comment sessions are an opportunity for citizens to share their opinions and remarks with the board. It is not a question and answer session. The board may or may not respond to public comments at the time they are made and is under no obligation to do so. The board does not endorse public comments, nor will the board be held liable for comments made by members of the public. Any individuals who may be the subject of public comments, including district employees, shall retain all rights against defamation and slander according to the laws of New Jersey. Having said that, is there anyone here that wishes to make a comment on agenda items only at this time? All right, seeing none, we will close the first public participation session. Um, before I move on to governance and recognize Ms. Lipsky, I did want to circle back a little bit to um, Tara's resignation and the filling of the board vacancy position. So, um, our next board meeting is April 17th. I would assume we would conduct interviews at that board meeting rather than scheduling something special in between time. Is everybody in agreement with that? Unless you're dying to schedule a special meeting somewhere else. We have plenty of special meetings. We have had plenty of special meetings. Okay, so um, this is Ron Case. Um, will you be able to post on the website the um, yeah, the vacancy, the vacancy and we'll, uh, we'll be interviewing on April 17th. On so April 17th. The same 
Yeah, sort of this, unfortunately, we're a little familiar with this process now. Um, what date do we want to have the resumes, or the letters of interest, really, not resumes, letters of interest submitted by? April 10th, that gives us a good week to review. Sounds good to me. It won't get, we can advertise on the website. It won't get into the newspaper until March 29th. All right, well, that um, still gives so people yeah, two weeks. To, because mm -hmm. we missed the deadline for, for this time. For this mm -hmm. Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay, on social. Good. Terrific. Okay. So you'd like them in by April, April 10th? April 10th, yes. And then any that you get, you can forward to the board members for our review. And board members will need to take a look at the questions for the interviewing process. I still have the ones that we've used in the past. I will get those out to you and see if there's anything that we want to tweak or adjust for the next time. We have a folder in the Google Drive so that as the applicants can put them in there too. The oh, good. You can put the questions there so you have access. Okay. And I'll um, put the question in the interview access so everybody can come. All right, that's good. And then, um, can we also put in the posting and on social that they can, anybody who's interested can reference the website because there's a lot of information there on becoming a board member. Some of it speaks to if you're going to actually be running for an election in November, but the rest of the information pertains to. They will. They will. Because. Maybe. 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 Ma
Thank you, Mrs. Davis. Uh, we have had two meetings since our last uh, board meeting. Obviously, it's a budget budget time. It was March 6th and March 12th. Um, I was absent for the first meeting, and I was only in half of the meeting on the 12th. So I will I will acquiesce <laughs> to Dr. Davis <laughs> to fill us in. I already made some comments in regards to. Uh, some of the items, some of the traditional items are here in regards to the secretary's reports and the safety drills and things that happen. Uh, you know, the big piece is really number 12 with the $2.5 million uh, small business uh, grant, or it's a grant, so that's significant. Uh, we'll come back to 13. Preschool expansion's on there, and 13, I'm going to pass the mic on down. This is Ron Case to say a little bit in regards to an overview for the budget that we're putting forth to the county office. Remember, the formal presentation will happen in May. First. Okay, so tonight we present um, to you a tentative budget to submit to the county office. Um, as stated in the release of state aid on February 29th, Audubon School District, District received a decrease in state aid of one hundred fifty-five thousand three seventy-one. In addition to this loss, the 23-24 budget included a withdrawal from emergency reserve and capital reserve that totaled nine hundred thousand, which is not available in the 24-25 budget. So, currently, as listed here, and also the operations committee discussed. Um, the tentative budget proposes a tax levy of 3.7% increase by using health care cost adjustment of 144207 and bank cap of $94,079. This would result, and this is unofficial because the tax assessor would need to verify the rate. Um, would have a tax increase of 7.7 .7 cents. Um, so the public hearing is slated for May 1st, um, where Dr. Davis and I will present the 24-25 budget in more detail. Just for the board's edification, the operation committee was in favor of, of putting forth this preliminary budget, so I just want to make sure um, that the full board was aware of that. Um, I did want to thank uh, Dr. Davis and Mrs. Ron Case for meeting with um, some of our state legislatures as well as other um, superintendents from the district regarding um, the funding, or lack thereof, the funding formula. Um, so I thank both of you for participating in that and for, for trying to um, do whatever we can to, to maybe um, change that outcome. You yeah, haven't stopped yet. No, it's just fantastic. Um, we, just so that um, the governance committee is aware too, we uh, talked about the supply lists for Haviland and Mansion and their linked to the agenda, so you can see that. It's pretty much um, um, the, the school district will cover what they covered last year. And um, the um, good news is that there is going to be a supply list forthcoming for the junior-senior high school 
so that um, parents and families can start to shop for those needed supplies and won't have to wait till the first couple of days of school. So having been in that position, I know that'll, that'll be really appreciated. Um, and Dr. Davis is going to um, make sure that a uh, presentation is scheduled with Parker McKay and Magno regarding special education at the Education Committee. Yeah. Um, let me just see if there's a, and the, re, the only reason I'm reporting on this is uh, I was just kind of pitch hitting for Mrs. in Mrs. Cox's absence. That was it. Okay. Um, any questions, comments, or discussion on non-agenda items for operation? All right. Can I get a motion then on items one through? Second. Okay, any questions on items 1 through 14? All right, roll call please. Mark Gaddy? Yes. Allison Lipsky? Yes. Jonathan Maxson? Yes. Andrea Robinson? Yes. Bill Wilson? Stephen Wilson? Yes. Jim Blumenstein? Yes. Allison Cox? Yes. And Amy Davis? Yes. Motion's passed. I also want to echo Dr. Davis's sentiments and thanking everyone, Mrs. Ron Case, and all of um, the other administrators and staff that were involved in putting forth the budget. It's been something that is worked on for months and months and months. Um, a, lot of, a lot of time and a lot of difficult decisions go into it. So. Thank you both, and thank you to everyone else that was involved. Um, for education, I'd like to recognize Ms. Robinson. Um, thank you. Yeah. Well, the Education Committee met on March 6th, and we discussed the summer, um, summer work, summer assignments that um, students might have to prevent the summer slump. Um, we discussed teacher overages um, and looked at that. It was brought to our attention that there are 100 new books in the library representing equity, um, and the classroom libraries at the elementary schools have also been refurbished with books about equity. And then we talked about the grading, um, policy 5430 and just taking another look at that um, policy and we are also looking forward to hearing more about the success of the win intervention period in the seventh grade um, and how that will be used in the eighth grade and then on the agenda there is the hip report which is item number one student statistics there are a lot of field trips related to students moving from one school to the next, so it's exciting to see that. The junior class trip is going to the YMCA of the Pines. Seems like a nice activity for them. Uh, facilities requests, then there's conferences, a lot of New Jersey tiered system of supports for early reading. instruction, out of district placements, and then the calendar for the 2024-2025 school year is the last item on the agenda for education. Yeah, I would just say, just so, just so everybody's aware, on page 11, the Empowering Women Educational Leaders uh, virtual uh, it's the third one up from the bottom, the well Dissinger. It's actually occurring on 4.30 and not 4.20. It's just a date change. And then as far as other comments in regards to what's on here, um, if anybody was pr participating virtually or here last uh, board meeting, there's a, you know, a good conversation in regards to the calendar. Um, 
purposely wanted to make sure the board members had an opportunity to provide some input uh, by working with the AEA and, and talking to the faculty and staff. We were able to, the proposed calendar that's here for you now uh, has a starting before September 1st, which gives us the opportunity to recognize many of the members in, in our, our population for different uh, different days off, I mean, you know, whether it be Martin Luther King's or uh, President's Day or Yom Kippur, those things were able to be considered in, in looking at the population. So, and also by doing that, doesn't extend the school year you know, into July. So I appreciate one the board's input, two the administrators having some conversation about that calendar, but then also the work with the AEA for them to reach out to their members and the AAA to talk about starting the school year for in service before. So it's really a big team effort there as well. All right, can I get a motion then on item number one under education? Motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call please for item number one under education. Allison Lipsky? Yes. Jonathan Maxson? Yes. Andrea Robinson? Yes. Bill Wilson? Yes. Stephen Wilson? Yes. Jim Blumenstein? Yes. Allison Cox? Yes. Mark Gaddy? Yes. Amy Davis? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Can I get a motion on items two through eight? Motion. Second. Any questions, comments, or discussion on items two through eight? All right, roll call please. Jonathan Maxson? Yes. Andrea Robinson? Yes. Bill Wilson? Yes. Stephen Wilson? Yes. Jim Blumenstein? Yes. Allison Cox? Yes. Mark Gaddy? Yes. Allison Lipsky? Yes. Amy Davis? Yes. Motion's passed. Thank you. Okay, and moving on to human resources. We met uh, last evening. We reviewed any open positions in the district, as well as items on this evening's agenda. Um, just wanted to let everybody know that staff directories and rosters for each one of the buildings are still linked to the um, HR agenda from last month for February and the high school, the junior, senior high, we're going to be adding a grade level and or content area to those teachers as well. Um, we had a discussion of, you know, some of the decisions that were, that went into bringing forth a balanced budget so that we um, had an idea of some of the um, implications of that. We also spoke uh, extensively about the sick leave policy, and I know that's something that's going to be coming to governance um, as well for them to take a look at. Um, Dr. Davis has some follow-up questions for Ms. Garrett uh, from the Human Resources Committee. And our next negotiations meeting is um, Monday, March 25th. We are making good progress and um, have agreed on some items, which is always good to hear. And, oh, also, I, I wasn't sure if we had talked about this before, but I just, I, br I brought it back to the forefront to have our student reps um, read Students of the Month. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, I know we had talked about a couple of different things when it came to the student representatives. I felt like that was like in the back of my brain somewhere, um, but maybe it just kind of got lost in the shuffle. So um, starting in April, we'll make sure that um, Jane and Monica are, given an opportunity. Can we make them have the number page? Because it might get a little weird. Like, they have seven and eight. About their so we thought of, we, that was something that we discussed, but we didn't know. Sometimes the littles are kind of apprehensive to come up to, so I didn't, I didn't know. So Dr. Davis was actually going to ask them what their preference was. I, I had just thought, too, about, you know, is it uncomfortable to be presenting yeah. with a peer, but we figured we'd let them call it. Yeah. We're also thinking 7th and 8th is in the 7th and 8th graders that are in the junior high that aspire to be school leaders in the quote unquote high.
Okay. Um, any questions or comments on non-agenda items for HR? Yes, I would. So the policy of sick leave, does that come in a recommendation? Well, we did, we did a review, not a recommendation. It's already in. It's, it's, it's on the queue for governance. It's been in the queue. So It's not rewritten yet. There's, there's some updates in there, and then there's some questions that we have to clarify <coughs> that I hope to have for us if Wednesday works. They're already in this first committee to so we, they saw, they had their eyes on it. They had their yeah, eyes we on looked it. at it last night. Okay. So any questions, anything that came, yeah, came forward to us, we gave to Dr. Davis, and he's either going to look into it or Ms. Karen is. Should we send it back to you? Yeah. We'll have an opportunity. Yeah, well, we can, yeah, we'll take a look at, it'll be whatever you guys work on at your meeting, we can link into the agenda and see what progress or discussion yeah. was that? When I, when, I, when I finally sunk my teeth into it, I was a little cautious because of all the intricacies and, and what the, the new sick leave law did. But when you take a look at it, the, the language is in, the impact of the language isn't as significant as I, as I thought it would be, but there are a couple questions that HR had, and there may be questions that governance has. So I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get it forward for a first read in April. <coughs> But there's other questions too because we all know that the new sick leave law goes against the, the, the good faith collective bargaining that everyone did that has individual contracts because the language in and well, of so itself the changes it. Fits, I think, the, I think yeah. so, the, so there's a little bit of that that goes on there too. So that's why HR and governance really has to volley with both, especially since we're in negotiations. Anything else? Okay. Then can I have a motion for items 1 to 18 under? I just want to say there's a fix on number 5. Oh. You didn't know. Okay. Number 5. Sorry. It's just the location. Uh, the evening custodian, Gary Bradley, who's on for the motion for 5, is actually at Mansion and not at Howard. Oh. Not biggie. Business office likes to make sure it's correct so they, they fill it correctly. All right, uh, motion then for items 1 to 18. Motion. Second. Questions or comments or discussion on 1 through 18? Congratulate um, Mrs. Tappan on her time with us as she will be retiring and leaving the district. Um, and then we also have uh, Mr. Riley, who's one of our bus drivers, who's going to be uh, resigning as well. So thank you to those folks. Okay, one more chance. Anything else under human resources? Okay, roll call, please. Andrea Robinson? Yes. Bill Wilson? Yes. Stephen Wilson. Yes. Jim Wilson. Jim. Sorry. Let's <laughs> go with the Wilsons there. <laughs> Jim Blumenstein. Yes. Allison Cox. Yes. Mark Gaddy. Yes. Allison Lipsky. Yes. Jonathan Maxson. Yes. Amy Davis. Yes. Motions passed. Thank you. All right. Um, for reports, you can see the HIV district report as listed, page 15. And then for our special program representatives, Mr. Stephen Wilson, anything for Ed Services? Nothing to report. Okay. Uh, Mr. Maxson, anything for school boards? No, nothing to report. Next meeting is going to be May 9th at 6 p.m. Excellent. Um, just Mr. Gaddy and I were able to attend the eighth grade dialogue. It actually uh, was Jane's sister who represented us, Lara, did a great job. Um, they, uh, they all did a wonderful job answering the questions, all of the, the kiddos on the stage. Mr. Gaddy and I were saying we don't think we were that poised when we were, <laughs> when we were that age. <laughs> but it was a very nice event. Um, and the kids had really interesting things to say. One of, um, one of the, the pieces of, of input that I thought was great concerning mental health, several of them um, talked about being outside 
maybe um, having some classes outside. I know we did that during COVID because we needed to, to get some distancing, but the students were referencing that and saying how much they really enjoyed that. And even um, being outside for lunch, um, even in the, in the upper elementary uh, or high school years. Um, I just thought that was kind of a, a common thread with some of the kids to, to want to be outside more than they, than they have the opportunity to. Anything else, Mr. Chani? Uh, they intend to rule the world, I believe. When they have future, they have future plans. Major plans. Major plans. Well, the other thing I heard a lot of talking about was the books. The, with the mental health. There was a lot of people were talking about how the, having the ability to take a walk throughout the school or to take a break from their mental health. I thought that was a big thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a nice evening. Mm -hmm. It really was. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Blumenstein for um, Ed Foundation. Yeah, I attended the most recent. I just add something to that because yeah the business office just sent out because I believe um, Mrs. Slack is meeting with each uh, like faculty um, going around to their meetings and uh, we just recently sent out the membership because there was questions on well can, how can we donate can we donate more so the business office did just send that out to all the faculty um, to to sign up if they wanted to start donating or to increase their membership. Thank you. Okay, um, community outreach, Ms. Robinson. Um, I know that people here have been attending events in uh, March. Does anybody want to talk about an event that they went to? There was the visiting author and the um, Sure, I'll talk about the visiting author. Um, Chris Rabenstein, who wrote Mr. Lovincello's library and series, uh, came and visited the kids in Mansion. They spent a whole a whole day with him, doing all different sorts of activities. Um, they had lunch with them. I joined with the student council and the newspaper club who asked some questions, and he was really engaged and complimented the staff at the school and how nice the school seemed. Uh, but special shout out to Ms. McGilloway for putting that together, and Ms. Smeltzer for empowering her staff to do such a great job at um, organizing something like that. Uh, Ms. DeVito and Ms. Wesson from the PTA were like fully engaged. Uh, so all in all, just a really good team effort, and the kids loved it, and my daughter came home like super stoked about it, her new book that she got. And he was signing autographs and signed bookmarks, and it was just a really nice, nice event, a nice day, so good job, everybody. my memory. I just want to make sure that I get it right. Um, March 7th was the Spectrum Sports event at Mansion. So I had a chance to um, go over to that. Um, it was nice. They, they um, It wasn't as well attended, I think, as they were hoping that it, it would be, but there were um, several students there and the staff from Spectrum Sports engaged them for about an hour in lots of fun activities. Um, so it was it was a good event, and I know that it was something that happened last year. Um, so I know it's something Miss Bissinger is is hoping to continue. So that was fun. Um, tomorrow night there is a meet your community, meet your neighbors event at um, Red White and Brew, and uh, some of the organizations, so that's Sustainable Audubon, the library. The Rec Center, the Fathers Association, Audubon Peer Peer Aid are going to be there. I'm at short notice, but that is something that we could jump on if anybody is interested. So, yes. Yeah. Um, maybe we can just. It looks like it's from 6:30 to 8:30, and maybe there's some trivia. I mean, 
I know you were interested. I guess that's, you that's where we should start. Does anybody want to go and represent? It'd probably be easier if maybe two people went. I I could go at 7:30. I'll build it. I'd be able to go perhaps later. But now you can maybe even go at six. Okay. Um, and then our other big thing that I don't know that we had um, a definitive answer on is Audubon Day is on April 27th. Um, do you are you able to go? Do you want to go? Should we commit? I have not committed to it yet. I did it last year. Yeah. I did it last year. Yeah. I I wasn't. But I can bring lots of things. Hopefully it won't be. So it's April 27th. Yeah. What time? Like it's April 27th. 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 It's I'll be like in between doing the. Uh, we have posters. to figure out an activity, right? That's yes. A, okay. Okay, great. And then. So that's that's it for April. Um, and then we don't. There's not actually. There were a couple things that were up oh. in the air, like the mansion color Wait, run. No, no, no. Okay. April twenty first is the inclusive walk for acceptance here at the high school. It's a Sunday, April 21st, okay. April 21st at 11. I know I'll do that. Maybe we can send out like a list of Sign up. for April. <laughs> yes. Well, there really isn't. Yeah. Those two things. People know of more things.
All right, I'm going to open up public participation again. Uh, this is an open discussion, so it does not have to uh, be limited to agenda items. So uh, everything that I said in the beginning uh, still stands. Anybody from the public that wishes to make uh, a comment? I just wanted to say that I've heard some community members reach out about the lottery for the preschool and how upset and disappointed they are and that you know that there's such a limited number and the expansion and there were some other people that suggested that there should be a cooperation between the Audubon district and the Mount Ephraim district to utilize the, the school that's sitting there on the intersection of Kings Highway and the Pike, I believe it's St. Rose or something close to that. And uh, that was it. That was my public comment to put that in your list. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Anybody else? Okay. Um, I'm going to close the second public participation. And um, I need a motion to go into a second executive session. Motion. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, no action will be taken. We may be about an hour, maybe less. Um, the next meeting is April 17th here in the Audubon Junior Senior Media Center. April 17th, Wednesday, April 17th. All right, thank you very much.